My brother who raised me after our parents died tried to destroy my career over his workplace affair, so I revealed to his daughters how he blackmailed their mom. I, 35F, need your opinion on a situation with my brother Billy, 40M. Some background first, our parents died in a car accident when I was 16 and Billy was 21. They left us some money but not enough to last long. Billy was in his third year of college studying engineering. He dropped out to work full-time and take care of me. He worked at a warehouse during the day and as a bartender at night. On weekends, he picked up construction jobs. Billy made sure I finished high school and went to college. He paid for everything, my clothes, food, college tuition, everything. When I got into college, we moved to a smaller apartment to save money. Billy slept on the couch for four years so I could have the bedroom. He never complained. Every time I told him to go back to college, he said my education was more important. During my first year of college, Billy met Regina, 38F, at the bar where he worked. She was a regular customer, came from a wealthy family. They started dating and got married within a year. I was 19 then. Regina never liked how close Billy and I were. She would make comments about how it wasn't normal for siblings to be so dependent on each other. She tried to stop Billy from paying my college tuition, said I should take loans like other students. Billy refused. Regina didn't want me visiting their house often. When I did visit, she would ignore me or make passive-aggressive comments. Billy always defended me which made things worse. They fought about me a lot. Regina wanted to move to another city for her job but Billy refused because I was still in college here. Looking back, I can see why she resented me. They had twin daughters Emma and Lucy when I was 20. I helped a lot with the baby since Regina had postpartum depression. I would go over after classes to babysit so Billy could work. Regina hated this but couldn't do much since she needed the help. The girls got very attached to me. When the girls were five, Regina cheated on Billy with his best friend Tom. They had been friends since high school. Billy found out when he saw messages on Regina's phone. She moved in with Tom within a week and they relocated to California. Regina gave up custody rights easily since Tom's job required lots of travel. She would call the girls maybe once a month initially, then the calls became less frequent. Billy was promoted to manager at the warehouse where he worked. He went back to college part-time and got his degree. Eventually he moved up to become VP of operations. When a position opened in HR at his company five years ago, he recommended me. I had been working in HR at a smaller firm. I got the job and did well, became HR head within three years. Last month, an employee complained about inappropriate behavior between Billy and his assistant Jenny, 28F. As HR head, I had to investigate. I discovered they had been having an affair for a year. Jenny was married too. I talked to Billy privately first, told him this violated company policies. Affairs between managers and direct reports weren't allowed. Billy got angry, said I was jealous because he finally had someone in his life. He said after everything he did for me, I should help cover this up. I gave him two weeks to either end it or resign. He didn't do either. I had to report it to the board since I had evidence. Billy started telling people I was making up lies because I was possessive and couldn't handle him dating. He said I had mental issues and needed therapy. Many people believed him since he had been there longer. The board investigation cleared him somehow. After that, Billy moved me to a basement office. He took away my team, gave them to another manager. I wasn't invited to meetings anymore. My parking spot was given to someone else. He would interrupt me in meetings and dismiss my ideas. It was clear he wanted me to quit. Last week he called me to his office and said I should resign or he'd find a reason to fire me. He said he'd tell other companies I was unstable and had fabricated harassment claims. I resigned since I couldn't fight him. That evening Emma and Lucy came to my apartment crying. They had overheard office gossip about me resigning. They wanted to know why their dad would do this to me. I was upset and told them everything, about the affair with Jenny, about him forcing me to quit. I also told them about their mom's affair which they didn't know about. They thought she had just abandoned them. They confronted Billy about everything. He called me later yelling about how I had no right to tell his daughters about his personal life or about their mother. He said I betrayed him and destroyed his relationship with his girls. The girls are staying with their Aunt Jane, Regina's sister, now. They aren't talking to Billy. He keeps calling and texting me saying I ruined his life after everything he did for me. My friends say I shouldn't have involved the girls in adult issues. I'm applying for new jobs and have some interviews lined up. But I feel bad about telling the girls everything when I was emotional. Billy sacrificed so much for me growing up but then he tried to ruin my career. I don't know if I went too far. Ida? Thanks for the responses. To be clear, I tried handling this professionally first and only told the girls the truth when they asked me directly. 
I didn't go out of my way to hurt Billy. Update 1 A lot has happened since my last post. I got a job offer at Mitchell and Partners, one of our biggest competitors. The pay is 30% higher than my previous job and they're giving me a larger team to manage. I start next week. But the main updates are about Billy and the girls. They're still staying with their aunt Jane. Billy has tried everything to force them to come home. First, he called their school saying the girls were sick and he was keeping them home. The school contacted Jane since she was listed as an emergency contact. Then Billy tried to change their emergency contacts online to remove Jane's information. He even went to the school demanding to take the girls home, but the principal refused since Emma and Lucy had told their counselor about the situation. Billy then started telling family members that Jane had manipulated the girls into staying with her. He said she always hated him and was trying to break up his family. He called the police saying Jane had kidnapped the girls, but when officers interviewed Emma and Lucy, they explained they had left voluntarily. The police told Billy this was a civil matter since the girls were old enough to decide where they wanted to stay. Last week, Regina suddenly showed up at Jane's house. Apparently Billy had called her saying the girls needed their mother. He probably thought they would listen to Regina since they hadn't seen her in years. But this completely backfired. When Regina arrived, the girls initially refused to see her. They stayed in their room while Jane talked to Regina in the living room. That's when Jane revealed something that changed everything. She showed me emails from her computer that she had saved from 10 years ago, right after Billy and Regina's divorce. The emails started in 2014, a month after Regina moved to California. The first one showed Regina asking to set up a custody arrangement. She offered to fly back every other weekend for supervised visits. She also wanted to pay child support even though the divorce agreement didn't require it since Billy had full custody. Billy's responses got increasingly threatening. He said if Regina tried to see the girls, he would contact her employers at Wells Fargo and tell them about her mental health history. Regina had been hospitalized for severe depression during college after her mother died. She had recovered with therapy and medication, but Billy threatened to make it sound like she was currently unstable and dangerous. More emails from 2015 showed Regina begging to at least attend the girls' school events. She said she would sit in the back and not approach them. She just wanted to see them from a distance. Billy replied saying he would send her parents details about her past relationships and private photos from before their marriage. Regina's parents were very conservative and had already distanced themselves after her affair. She was trying to rebuild that relationship. In 2016, Regina offered to put money in a trust fund for the girls' education. Billy threatened to file for emergency custody orders saying Regina was mentally unfit. He said he would drain her savings with legal fees until she had nothing left. The emails stopped after that. I confronted Billy about these emails. He broke down crying in his office and admitted everything. He said Regina deserved to lose the girls after betraying him with Tom. He kept saying he was protecting them from having an unstable mother. But then he slipped and said I wanted her to feel the same pain I felt when she left me. When I told the girls about the emails, they were devastated. Billy had spent years telling them Regina abandoned them for her new family. He would say things like if your mother really loved you, she would try harder to see you and she chose her new life over her children. The girls grew up feeling unwanted and rejected by their mother. They finally agreed to talk to Regina on the phone. She apologized for not fighting harder to stay in their lives. She explained that during her marriage to Billy, she struggled with depression but he wouldn't let her get help. He said therapy was for weak people. The affair with Tom was wrong, but she felt trapped and hopeless. After the divorce and Billy's threats, her depression got worse. She focused on getting mentally healthy before trying to contact them again. But by then Billy had poisoned their relationship with lies. The situation is affecting Billy badly. Jenny ended their relationship after finding out about the emails. She told HR that Billy had pressured her into their affair by hinting her job security depended on keeping him happy. Billy started drinking heavily. He calls me almost every night, sometimes crying and apologizing, sometimes threatening to destroy my career like he destroyed Regina's. Last night around 2 a.m., he showed up at my apartment drunk. He was banging on my door and yelling about how I ruined everything. He kept saying I raised you, I gave up everything for you. My elderly neighbor called the police. They made him leave but didn't arrest him since he went willingly. Emma and Lucy asked to move in with me temporarily. They said they don't feel safe around Billy anymore but aren't ready to move to California with Regina either. I agreed after discussing it with Jane and Regina. Billy threatened to fight this legally but his lawyer told him he had no case. The girls are 15 and courts generally consider their preferences at this age. I feel terrible watching my brother fall apart like this. He was my hero growing up. He dropped out of college and worked multiple jobs so I could get an education. But he also spent years manipulating and hurting people. 
He used his daughters as weapons to punish their mother. The girls deserve to know the truth about both their parents. Update 2 The past two months have been challenging. The girls moved in with me and we had to adjust to our new living arrangement. I converted my guest room into their bedroom. They started therapy twice a week to process everything. Their therapist said they're dealing with abandonment issues from both parents. Billy's behavior has gotten worse since the girls moved out. He started showing up at my new office building. The first time, he waited in the parking lot for two hours until I finished work. He followed me to my car asking about the girls. Security had to escort him out. A week later, he came to my office during lunch. He somehow got past reception by saying he had a meeting. He barged into a client meeting I was leading and started yelling about how I had stolen his daughters. Security removed him and my company's legal team sent him a warning letter. The third time, he waited outside the building entrance in the morning. When other employees complained, the company banned him from the property. They installed extra security cameras and gave me a parking spot closer to the entrance. Billy then started spreading rumors in the industry. He told people I had mental issues and had made up the affair with Jenny because I was jealous. He contacted my college friends on Facebook saying I had a history of lying and causing drama. Some people who knew him from his old job believed him. This backfired when Jenny finally got tired of his lies. She went to HR at our old company with evidence of Billy's behavior. She showed them text messages where Billy said he would make her work life difficult if she didn't keep him happy. He had changed her performance reviews when she tried ending things. Jenny also revealed she's pregnant with Billy's baby. She's due in five months. She showed me messages from when she first told him about the pregnancy. Billy offered her $10,000 to take care of it quietly. When she refused, he started telling people she got pregnant on purpose to trap him. He claimed she was sleeping with other managers too. The girls are having a hard time with the pregnancy news. Emma broke down during therapy saying she felt disgusted that her dad got someone only 13 years older than her pregnant. Lucy pointed out that Billy spent years calling their mom a horrible person for cheating, but then did the same thing with someone young enough to be his daughter. They blocked Billy's number after he kept texting them guilt-tripping messages. He would say things like after everything I've done for you girls, this is how you treat me and you're breaking your father's heart. When they didn't respond, he made new social media accounts to contact them. Regina found a job at a bank here and is moving back next month. She got an apartment in our school district. We met for coffee to discuss arrangements for the girls. She apologized for how she treated me during her marriage to Billy. She admitted feeling threatened by my close relationship with him and taking out her frustrations on me instead of addressing issues with Billy directly. I also apologized for not seeing through Billy's manipulation earlier. Regina said Billy had always been controlling but hid it well. He isolated her from friends and family. When she had postpartum depression, he refused to let her get help. He said it would look bad if people knew his wife needed therapy. Billy finally got fired last week. Several female employees came forward after Jenny's revelations with similar stories about his behavior. Three major clients threatened to leave over the scandal. The company offered him a severance package in exchange for signing an NDA about the circumstances of his departure. He's been messaging me from new accounts saying he'll expose my secrets. I'm not sure what secrets he means since I've been pretty open about my life. The girls want to get a restraining order. James' lawyer is helping us document all his messages and incidents. Update 3 This is my final update on the situation. We got approved for a restraining order against Billy three months ago. The judge ordered him to stay 500 feet away from me, my home, and my workplace. He's also banned from contacting us through any means including social media or third parties. Billy violated the order twice. First, he sent letters to my house trying to explain his side of things. Then he asked his friend to pass messages to the girls at school. The judge gave him a warning and said the next violation would mean jail time. He finally moved to Arizona last month. A former colleague helped him get a lower-level management job there. No companies here would hire him after everything that happened. He sold his house and barely speaks to anyone from his old life. Jenny had her baby boy last week. The DNA test confirmed Billy is the father. Jenny's lawyer arranged for Billy to have supervised visits once a month at a family center. He's shown up twice so far but spent both visits complaining that the baby doesn't look like him. He still tells people Jenny trapped him even though the DNA test proved paternity. The girls want nothing to do with their half-brother. They say it feels weird that their dad's new baby is closer to their age than he is to Billy. They're focusing on rebuilding their relationship with Regina instead. Regina moved back two months ago. She got an apartment 15 minutes from us and the girls spend alternate weekends there. They're doing family therapy together every week. Regina is trying to make up for lost time while respecting their boundaries. 
She attends their school events but sits separately to let them decide if they want to interact. Emma and Lucy have adjusted well to living with me. Their grades improved now that they're in a stable environment. They joined some school clubs and made new friends. We converted my home office into a proper bedroom for them with desks for studying. They're talking to a lawyer about legally changing their last name to mine. I got promoted to VP of HR at my company. Word spread in our industry about what really happened at my old job. Most of Billy's friends stopped defending him after Jenny revealed the truth about their affair. But some still say I betrayed my brother after everything he did for me growing up. Billy messages me sometimes from unknown numbers. He switches between apologizing for everything and blaming me for destroying his life. Last week he said he's writing a book about how false allegations ruined his career. I don't respond anymore. I still miss the brother who raised me after our parents died. He worked multiple jobs and slept on a couch for years so I could go to college. But that person is gone now, replaced by someone I don't recognize. The girls and I are building our own kind of family. Some days are still hard, but we're healing together. The restraining order is valid for three years. The girls will be in college by then. Regina is becoming a better mother now that she's gotten help for her depression. Life isn't perfect, but we're all learning to move forward without Billy's toxic influence. Sometimes losing a family member is better than keeping them in your life.